we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit, lit. This is a unique hustle. Big check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my day of walk on. I want y'all to stop what y'all doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, everywhere that you can type in Boss Talk Podcast 101, you can find us, I guarantee you. But if you want to see all our visuals, just definitely go ahead and sign up for our membership. Not just subscribe, but when I mean sign up for a membership, how you do so is under each and every video, including this one, Click the description link and you'll see another link that says join our membership. Click that and you can do so because people see us on an everyday basis and say, oh, I love your content. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep pushing it. How you show your appreciation is going ahead and sign up for your membership. Thank you in advance, and we love you, and we're going to keep pushing this every single day. God bless him. Hey, man, listen, man. We got this guy on here today, y'all, by way of New York. Comedian oh, wait, Rob is in the building, man. Stop playing. What's going on, brother? What's happening? I'm man, listen, know. man. I got me. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. All, of, all you Puerto Ricans, all you Hispanics, don't try to hate on Balls Talk. We cross over. <laughs> <laughs> we crossed over. You got to. I'm going to be honest. I was a little, you know, I've seen, you know, I follow Balls Talk. and Really? I was like, yeah, y'all ain't messing with us Puerto Ricans. Y'all treat oh, like Mexicans. Damn. Damn. You must not see him. What's his name? Man, we had a bunch. No, no, no. Um, Who, which one? Go ahead. He, see, look, look, look. No, 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 uh, no, no. no, I'm no, to no. His name. He wasn't that important. Yeah, the, 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 the Mr. Mr. George. Mr. George. That's why George Lopez posted us, too. Oh, no, Mr. Mr. George, George, but he's Mexican. No, but Mr. No, Mr. The... George is the guy that be like, uh, Mr. George, Mr. George, this guy here, you're, he works. He's a comedian, though. But he ain't like. He's, he's, not, he's not a comedian. He's, he's not, 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 not. Oh, here we go. But he ain't a comedian. You know what he's like? He, 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 the internet age, he ain't even. But you might be the first Puerto Rican. Is he the first? The only, well, you know, so right now yeah, I'm the we only. Never had we, a, we never had. We one. never had. We have had. Shout out to you, baby. We here. Yeah. You make it sound like I'm a pilgrim. You know, like I just crossed the Mayflower. <laughs> That's how the first slave felt when he <laughs> got it. I'm the first nigga in, <laughs> in, in well, America. How did you? How did you Man, I'm, we got so much but to talk about. I love your New York accent. We got though. so what much to talk York about. Where are you from? I grew up in the Bronx. The in Bronx. the Bronx. Yeah, but then okay, I, I grew up in the Bronx. South, South, South Bronx. I was, at, I was at the first Prince of Bel Air. We moved to the suburbs. <laughs> so I can't even front. Because if anybody see, they were like, he wasn't in the Bronx. He was in Long Island. He was in the suburbs. How old were you? Okay, how long did you stay in the Bronx for? I was in the Bronx till I was about 11. So how, from out, because you were so born in... So 11, and then I was, I was born in Manhattan. In, oh, you were born in Manhattan. Yeah, okay. so I was born in Manhattan. I was in the Bronx so about 11, and then my parents moved out. They bought their first house. Okay. You know, one of those things of, you know, moving the family out of the projects type of thing, and then we moved to, uh, we moved to Long Island, which is the suburbs okay. of New York. So how was the change for you as a kid from the Bronx to Long Island suburbs for you? You know, but when I was even in the Bronx, you know, my parents had put me in a Catholic school. Oh, okay. You know, you in Catholic school? For, right up to when we moved. But prior to that, Frazon Love, who I, I, I go on the road with, he uh, he lived right around the corner from me in the Bronx. Really? Oh, wow. And you know, I mean, like, we had same and friends. And you knew him and everything? No, we didn't know each other. Really? And we might have, but, you know, we was young. young you know, you're talking yeah. about six, seven years old. So when I said uh, earlier, Roxanne Shantae, the hip-hop era, uh, uh, Eric B and Rakim, MC Shan, stop playing. Stop Africa Bombada. Stop Africa Bombada, man. So my, my family was, my, my, I had a cousin that was down with, at that time, it was, Underground, underground, underground. So rap was was not out. So you're talking about Spoonie G, yeah, yeah, Kumo D. Or, so I used to get these Bismarck under, key. all these underground tapes, and Bismarck wasn't even out. He wasn't even we're talking out. about the '70s. Oh, this is the, oh, oh yeah, because you know 70s. rap did Funky start. Fresh, rap yeah. did start in New York in Let's the '70s and started in the Bronx. In the Bronx. So when I moved to Long Island, and I used to get these underground tapes, nobody was. You know, and the first commercial uh, album that came out was uh, Sugar Hill Gang. Rappers I met them dudes. 50, 50, well, they did my wife's, uh, uh, my wife's 50th birthday party. Wow. But they, um, so learning that, but then, you know, my parents were both in law enforcement 
And so I grew up kind of privileged. So yeah. I can't say I had to grew up with both parents I, in the household. And I still have, yeah, and I, I still have relatives. And how relatives. you ended up in doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing then? Yeah, there was a time. What happened was when you privileged, <laughs> that's where you learn that you want to take shortcuts in life. You yeah, know? So yeah. I, was, I was real privileged. I was in college. I got married young. How old were you? I got married at 18. And it's the same wife you have college. right now? No, no. Oh, okay. No, how long were you staying married for? We, we we ended up married. I got married too young, so we figure probably about six years up to That's about when I was six, seven years until I was you know until I went to jail. Yeah, at least that wasn't you had a bumped year. Bumped well, at least that wasn't a year because some people be only married for just a year. Yeah, at least you, you, know, had grew up, you know I grew up in a, a, a household mother father, so right, I believe so in that. Helps. I started dating her. She had stepdaughters, and and I felt like you know I wasn't going to sleep in someone's bed. With their kids around and not be a father type. That's right. real. So, That's a real man. So that was that was how I grew with that. But you know, I I, I took those shortcuts. You know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't looking to. I, I should have went stayed in college. You know, I had football scholarships. I was uh, I went to St. John's, but it was one of those things when I always had that mischievous thing about me. You know, I'm spontaneous. Some Get people it done, would say let's do the it. street was calling. The street were calling. They shouldn't have been calling. You know, so <laughs> my ear was still to the street. A little bit, so I got involved with some involved with the mob. You know, New York, you can get involved with a yeah, lot of things. Yeah. So, what did your dad say? Cause you said he was law enforcement. He what was, did he? My say? dad was a cop. He was actually the first police officer in his in his uh, in his agency in New York City. So, what did he say? So, when what did he, he got locked up? When you got, when uh, you, he was in a bad he was position. Upset, wasn't he? Yeah, but you know what? My dad kept it real. You know, he you know he never asked me if I did it. He never I was did. Just, see, I was just about to ask you, did he know about what you were doing before no, you I was, got locked? I was out the house. I was but out the house raising a family at that I'm, time. How many get out of jail cars free did you get from him being because your father? Because he was a... Well, you know, maybe tickets, but, you know, I, I actually... It put me in a good position in jail. Yeah. Because even though I was also protected by the mob, which, mm -hmm. you know, um, he... Him being who he was, so when you're in jail... You know, you get a level of respect from either like, you know, a good fellas type thing, right? And then you get respect because they know your father's law enforcement. But that was, it hurt me in the beginning because they put me in protective custody. Yeah, yeah. But they did that mainly because there were people snitching against me. They wanted to seem like I was snitching. So mm. once we, once we neutralized that, there was a way we did that. Um, How long did you stay locked up? I was locked up for a little bit over two years. Two years. But I was waiting for trial, and, and I was about to beat trial, but I was facing 25 to life on the other end, so they gave me a plea agreement the day before trial. Wow. Uh, because we, we had one, had a big, mm. big, big time power house attorney back then, and um, it was one of those things that I want to come home, and all my father told me, like I said, he never asked me, did you do it? What he said was, if you feel like you're guilty, you, you know, then you take your deal. If you feel like you're not guilty and you can do the time, then you plead not guilty. And that's how we made the decision to take the cop out. Because I knew I wasn't not guilty, you know. Yeah, yeah. At that time, I was involved with, that's when the crack game got started oh, heavy. Oh, So I was involved with some people, at, and at that in the 80s, it was uh, uh, armored car robberies going on back so then. So that was the yeah. charge was... Yeah, we, car oh, yeah, more over almost a million dollars in robberies on my cars. Wow, man, mm -hmm. and, and and you think about it, man. Though, like I said, did you ever? I mean, did y'all get away with anything? Or oh, we got they, away with. Oh, we never got got caught. That's what I'm saying. The so you already had. That was a behind the scenes guy. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. He had an already. He had a man. Sometimes we get bumped by head. So the robberies. I was at that time. I was twenty. That I was, I was 22. 22, okay. Bump your head, bump your head, and then finally you have to do a stint. So, but, hold on, sorry. But the reason why you and your wife broke up at that time is because she couldn't wait for you to come out? No, she found out all the dirt. Yeah, while oh, I was so in. Oh, so she didn't even know? Well, I, yeah, because well, I was a bad boy. Female dirt? Female dirt. There was oh, female okay. dirt. She yeah. knew about the money. She knew when she opened up a box of cornflakes <laughs> and it was stuffed with money. She knew I ain't, right. I ain't get that from working. That's right. Because I worked behind the scenes. I was, I was going to college. I was... Also a security investigator, so that, and that's where my that's where my expertise to the mob. Yeah, so you place. knew you knew yeah, you knew so, some things. Yeah, so I was the behind the scenes. It wasn't these ruthless guys right. that go out there with guns and shoot. That's them what out. I was on. It was all carefully planned back then. Remember, there weren't that many cameras. 
There wasn't that many, and there was an honor code back then. So that that's what was you know intriguing to me. How the, do you change from that into comedy though? Like like how does that go? My whole life, you know, we my I've created my own obstacles. Okay, right? so we do that, right? I grew up in a great family, great parents. You know, they're deceased. God rest their soul. Now nah, they died early of of ailments, but they uh, you know, I created these obstacles. And learn the hard way because we always want to shortcuts, you know, we, even though we know better, you know. So at that point, um, once I got out of jail, it was kind of one of those things where family was more important. And my freedom, you know, when you're yeah. in jail locked up with guys, you know, I had cellmates because they had me on a high bail because they, they wanted to, they knew that I knew a lot of things. So they wanted to make sure I didn't get out. So, and, but the mob was also there because that was my behind ties, and they never had to threaten me. Mm -hmm. I knew the code, there's an honor code, which nobody cares about today, but in, in any event, when you, I was locked up with guys that were that probably still in jail, I've died That's already. right, that's right. So when you, when you see that reality in your life, you know, I, I remember these guys that a, a Kentucky Fried Chicken robbery in, in Long Island, and they killed the manager and the worker. So I'm in jail with these guys. They go to trial. They blow trial. So these guys are doing 50 to life. My cellmate came home from trial. Meanwhile, I know that I'm still waiting for trial. And he's all upset. And I'm trying to, yo, don't worry about it. You know, you'll be home one day. But really, he, he, he's, he's facing, home. he never coming home. Right. So I'm sitting there. And that's why I had to do a reality check. You know, I had kids. I wanted to get out for freedom. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I, I kind of made, you know, we all make that little pact with God yeah. where we say, listen, That's right. this you, is it. That you I'm get me through this, I'm going I'm to try really hard to be a better person. But yeah. even when I'm thinking about, you say you're the behind the scenes person and you're dealing with the mob. And when I think about the police with a behind the scenes person, I'm like, okay, I don't really want you. I want all of these people. So, you know, they're going to be trying to pressure you, be like, man, all oh, you no, this, well, this, this, I, this. I got, see, the good thing was, you know, which is what happens in minority communities. I had great representation. Okay. They, they, they wasn't, they, you know, my lawyers was my lawyer was top notch. Mm. So, you know, and I. So but, you didn't have to go through any of that. They 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 tried a little bit, but it was one of those things. Lawyers involved, boom, and then my dad was law enforcement and my so they mother. Couldn't, yeah, they couldn't. So they couldn't, they couldn't put they, they couldn't push, but so much mm. because then at that point I'm protected on both on both points. That's real. And then you know so. But moving forward, you know, once I got out, you know, the reality of being a single dad, because then, you know, my wife and I were separated, right. going through a divorce. So, you know, God, I was at my lowest because at that time I still had to be low key. I had to, you know, I had to work a, you know, you I didn't have no that money. extra money. I didn't have that extra money that I used to have, that right. that, that F around money. You had to get so, used to that. So I had to I had to rebuild from the beginning, you know. So that was the, you know, and, and that was the obstacle I made myself. So, um, I did, I did. I met, you know, I, I got another chance. I met my wife. Um, we've been together 30 plus years. Hey, oh, that's awesome. And we, you know, she, she's my rock. She don't, she she lets me grow, you yeah. know, which is what happens. You know, I, you know, you know I've, I've been me all my life. But when we had opportunities, you know, we went through the struggles and things like that. So that's how comedy came about. I moved from the East Coast to the West Coast because my family moved out there. Okay. So when I moved to the West Coast, it was, you know, when you grow up in New York, you know, but people think that, right? New Yorkers are just cocky and arrogant. It's not that. You go to New and York. mean. Well, look, if you, if you take you here, even here or, 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 or Arizona, they don't know what a Jamaican is. They mm -hmm. know the island for mm -hmm. vacation. Like New York have it everywhere. But, but I was dating Caribbean women, Guyanese, Jamaican. You go out to, to, to Arizona, that's where I ended up moving to. You don't learn that. You don't Ain't learn what you, you don't. You don't know anything about a Jamaican. Right. You don't know anything about curry chicken and the, that great food. <laughs> oxtails. You know. You learn. You learn that. You know. You learn that on the New York side, on the big city side. So when I did that, I would see how they treat whites and Mexicans. They like the whites really shitted on Mexicans in Arizona, right. and it was not. It wasn't a prejudice. It it, it was kind of a. It was a self ignorance of not mm. wanting to know the difference, and I don't, I don't fault people for that. You know, there's, there's those people, KKK people, they believe in that. But when you take, you know, you move around the country, you don't realize 
that the reason why we're so divided is not that we're divided, it's what we grow up to know. Some so, things are embedded in there. And, and I've learned that in comedy. I go to different cities. Right now, I'm the only Hispanic comic. Right? And I say Hispanic because it's different than Mexican. But I'm the only Hispanic comic on the urban circuit that travels and works with the comics that I do. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to ask you. Like, how did you even get to... Uh, how did you know that you could appeal to the crowds that you appealed because to? Because I, I I grew up in New York. That New York comedy, uh, some of the you know some of the OGs, uh, talent, uh, Rob Stapleton, Ag White, you know Mike Troy. These guys out of New York, they were some of the pioneers. They were on the Def Jams. They were on the Bad Boys of Comedy. And you traveled with some of these people. Well, I I grew up in comedy, but I had to come back to them. Oh, okay. Because I started in Arizona because I wanted to be funny, and I love those guys. Who was the first person you went on tour with? My first person, I, the first person I went, went on, on the tour road ever with. on the road with was Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy. What? Wow, rest in peace. Charlie Murphy, rest well, in how peace. How did you even link with Charlie? Well, Charlie's family. So if you know about the Murphys, Eddie, Eddie mm -hmm. and Charlie grew up in Roosevelt, New York. Right. I grew up in Uniondale, New York. Um, their cousin, Rich, went to school with my younger brother. And I knew Uncle Ray. Rest in peace, Uncle Ray. Uncle Ray, I met because that was community based. So I knew Uncle Ray was was Eddie's uncle, and then Uncle Ray was in all the Eddie Murphy movies. He always did cameos and roles, and um, I got my first opportunity from Rich to, wow. to perform with Charlie. Wow! And then um, and you learned a lot from him. Well, I, you know, I just learned. I just you got to be a student of the game. You know, we was having this conversation about why. Older comics don't respect. Right. It's not that we don't respect them. It's hard for, that's like in any profession, right? So you guys have a podcast, right? And, and however long you've been having it. Two years. Yeah. We've only been around two, so years. two years. Quick. So now there's Quick. somebody that had a podcast that's been doing it for 10 years, might be like, oh, y'all a baby. Y'all only yeah. been doing it two yeah. years. You yeah. guys haven't. Yeah. So We're that's how it is with comedy. In the beginning, I thought I was, I was funny. I used to do a lot of, try to do skit comedy. I used to wear outfits. I always had to come out to music. But I was so attracted to, I grew up in a minority community. Right. So I was always into um, diversity because I knew whites, I knew blacks, I knew Hispanics, but we just saw each other together as growing up. Mm -hmm. So in comedy, that's how it really is. So I used to fly from Arizona to New York on my own dime just to do shows and open mics in New York. Because wow. that's a hard crowd. Yeah. You know, because if I do it on the West Coast, I'm doing... I call it Chancleta. That's the George Lopez of comedy. That's that Mexican comedy. I don't know what that is. Yeah. You know, I was... I so was, your comedy changes depends on what city you're going to. Well, what, or how you grow up. Well, my comedy? Yes, your comedy. Well, be, well there's comedy according... Like, I can do mainstream. Mainstream is white comedy. Right? Yeah. You do that with, with white folks and what they like to listen to. You know, then you do urban comedy. Urban comedy, you gotta yeah. know... Yeah. You know, I'm... I, you know, like, people... You know, I... I say it, it to me is not disrespectful. I grew up with it, you know. I'm like, yo, my nigga, what's up? But that's how Puerto Ricans are. Puerto Ricans are light skinned black. That's how I grew up. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife, all my kids are half black. My wife, my ex wife, and my wife are black. You know, so I grew up, you know, that diverse learning that. You know, and then urban comedy to me, I grew up with the Def Jam era. I grew up with the, you know, I, you know, my my mentors was always you know Red Fox, Eddie, man, uh, uh, you know, you you know those sitcoms, you know, and so I networked to do urban comedy. Then I would meet some of the, you know, all these comics that are, I call them the real comics, because I'm like, you know, of course, I, I travel with great and, and perform with great comics, but the real comics are the ones that pay their rent doing, doing comedy, comedy, doing $50 shows, doing three shows a night in different parts of the city, five nights a week just to pay their rent. You know, and they're funny, but they don't really ever make it right. to that point where they could do a weekend in these comedy clubs because it's a whole political thing. Let me ask you about uh, Charlie Murphy. Like when you first uh, seen him, because I know it had to hurt you being that y'all had a history when you seen him. It, it was on. It was on. Was it on Empire? Where, where, where did we see him when he 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 had started losing weight? Mm -hmm. Was that on? That was on. Well, it was. It was, it was yeah, on so Power it, or it, Empire. Where was it at? I don't remember the show. It was on Empire. But, I know, I but you could see him in those episodes and you knew that he was going and, through that health crisis. And it was, it was crisis. kept very quiet yeah. with, his, with his illness. 
but anybody behind the scenes would know. So yeah. So that's you know. Then, so you knew about it way before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew that he was sick, and and but then they kept it even. You know, they kept it real low key. You know, we didn't know. Nobody knew that it was terminal. Terminal. Because they just kept that really hush hush. Yeah. So and then I moved on. You know, actually, he he took me off the road. He did because he had another comic that was opening for him, his regular guy, and he and I was a little similar. Okay. But then we ended up doing the show. We ended up back in Phoenix, and I was going crazy. You know, like, I didn't know. You, you got to, and, and I won't say that this is really what happened, but you got to know your role when you're opening comedian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The show's not for me. My job is strictly to open up the crowd to get ready for the headline. Get them warned up. Yeah, and that's hard for. But you learned that job. over time, right? Well, you learned. You learn how to deal with it over well, time. Because if that's the way. You, there's etiquette to this. Yeah. You know, there's that's that's why comics that have come up the long way, they don't they struggle with some of these comics that want to get that instant fame. There's no such thing as instant fame. You got to be funny wherever you are. Got to put that work in. So. I put that work in, like the first comic that put me under his wing and took me, spent time with me to get better was Phase on Love. Yeah, that's yeah. my boy, so man. So that's, you know, so, I mean, we're best friends to this day. That's hard, that's you know, hard. And, and, you know, he's never just catered, you know, he's not, he, he's, he's built a lot of comedians, a lot of comedians that are out there. He's been you doing know? that a long time. Yeah, but, and then, you know, it is, I call him the lazy comic. He should, he should. He should <laughs> Why are you calling him because, that? Because he should be the greatest you know, but because he's such a great person and, and a great actor, people sleep on his comic, mm -hmm. his comedian yeah, angle. Yeah. Because the comedy angle is what started him. But yeah. you know, he loves his he loves his acting. Yeah, but mm -hmm. so I still think they, they don't even you know like you've never seen a special, and that's his choice that you haven't seen him in his special yet mm -hmm. because he wasn't in a rush where everybody's rushing. They want to get to Netflix. They want to get to Netflix. You know, that's not, he's going to do his special when he wants to do his special. Yeah, before he retires. He, he, he travels when he wants to travel. Do you believe him that he said he going to retire? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody buys that crap. Well, I told him no when he, he came take, on here. He take time off. He not retiring. He not re we not letting him he, retire. You know why? Because he can't stay. He, he can't. It's, it's, it's in him. He's going to get it's bored. In him. He gets bored. He takes breaks. He'll do a couple movies. He'll come back on the road. He hates the road. That I know. He hates airports. He hates the road. You know, but it, it's in him because... But when y'all go through the airports, that's the one, one thing I've always wondered. When y'all um, go through these airports... Don't y'all get bombarded by people like, can, can I get yeah, that's him. pictures? That, that's exactly, can I get that's exactly. They, we want, they, He can't move, can he? He can't move. That's why he hits the airports. You know, And you know what? He never turns down a picture. A picture. You know, like, love like, his, yeah, love no matter how much he hates Love his fans. It, you know, like, because, it, you know, you he'll be sitting down and they'll come up. We went to breakfast yesterday and he was like, Oh, gee, the cook came out from the back. The the waitress. I, I don't mean to bother you. Well, yeah, you are. You're like, trying to eat pancakes right now, and it's not. But people, you got to remember, they're the ones that built him. You know, that's yeah. why he does what he does. But people do that because they don't know if they'll ever see him again. Well, and and, 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 and and you know, you don't realize what he does realize how much, how much uh, joy. Yeah, it brings you people. bring in this in this ugly world, especially yeah. as a comedic actor or a comedian. Like you ain't gonna see. Uh, uh, you're not seeing Faison in a love story <laughs> without making somebody laugh. Oh, he gonna right. bring it. He gonna bring you know, it. He, 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 whether it be an adventure movie, even his he gonna bring movie, it every Billy time. Tucker, it's funny from the beginning, <laughs> the lines, but he brings so much joy to people's lives, yeah. especially us as comics that, you know, like I, I, I'm on the road also now with uh, uh, Gary Owen mm -hmm. and that was I've never Faison. seen him perform before. So that was through Faison, mm -hmm. right? And it was kind of it, it solidified because I was with Phase On. Phase right. On was doing movies. I wasn't with Phase On for a yeah. while, and it was like, yeah, I had an opportunity to go on with Gary, and you know, I see how these guys live their lives. You know, Phase On is of course at such a level of you know, with his movies and things like that, but people just bombard them and they get mm -hmm. you know. So we live this life with these comedians, and you know, I I, I shot a special. And we had it on hold because it was a culture, a cancel culture thing going on. Oh. So what's happened is, as comedians, knowing your place, you know, because um, we were calling it features, right? Because that's what they call the comic that opens up for the headline is right. the feature. Mm -hmm. To me, 
that's the most important role to a headliner to, to build someone up and that's how we learn how to be because some of the best comedians I know are features mm -hmm. you know they can headline you know I can headline but we don't we're not ready for that till we learn that's the argument we was having Earlier. before about about Country Kevin mm -hmm. and all of that you know oh here we go I'm not well, doing this well here's the truth Country Wayne never featured for anybody he didn't so let me tell you who I work with I, of course Faison he's mm -hmm. I owe him everything Faison, Charlie Murphy uh, and that's the little ones I've done mm -hmm. the Tell Givens I've done Lunell Wow. I'm open for D.L. Hughley. I open for Gary Owen. Um, open for Kevin once. Uh, I mean, it is. I've worked with all. The, when See, I say the greats, and females. Yeah, but how do you? How do you, Kevin? Well, that's a different type of like. His comedy is different. His stand up is not the same as. It's no, a different. It, it, no, Kevin started. If you, you, people don't know, Kevin. Kevin was right there doing the same barbecue joints and little comedy clubs. Kevin, that's, you know, now it's because you see, Kevin that you see how is was you, How was it when you was working with him early on? I, I did I did a weekend, right? I just was an open guest. And it, Kevin is probably one of the, another one of the most smart, smartest businessmen. He's the one that told me to hold on the special because um, so many people go to him for advice. Yeah. Because what he did was he started out getting his first contract, right? Live Nation, going on tour. And that, as soon as his contract was over, he didn't sign another one. He created his own company, and he created his own tours. Mm -hmm. So, and then he has his clique of guys that he keeps, and that's what started. So we had a clique, and I wanted to go up, and, and Faison was like, no, nah, you got to relax, right? Because his guys were the plus plastic cup boys. We were Faison's guys. Faison, we called ourselves nasty boys. So, you know, myself, comedian Mario Hodge, we were like, we'll, we'll eat those guys up, you know, because we, we didn't think they were funny. You know, that's just a little competitive edge, you know. But, you know, we learn from these headliners. So you learn from a Faison. You learn, Faison gets on, you know, even now, at some point, if Faison doesn't see you grow, he'll give you the advice, he'll give you opportunity, but then you can't get on the road no more. Wow. <laughs> it's not, there's no disrespect. You got to go do your own thing. Yeah. You can't be the same stale Bread, you know, that's why, you know, when I got his blessing to go on the road with Gary, it was one of those things was it was like, well, grow. You know, Gary was doing a lot more stages and the only way I can get better was getting on the road um, and earning a spot. So we got to earn our spot. You know, we, you know, you, funny is, is funny. You could be funny in the conversation, right? We could sit here and laugh. But, you know, I, I opened up in Memphis. I opened up in Mississippi, Alabama, Detroit, Florida. West Coast, East Coast. Now I'm a Hispanic comic. I'm opening up for urban shows. I'm doing all these cities. I've done, last year was 35 cities, over 300 shows. And that's where you learn to get better. Because the crowd, you know, you got to make that crowd in that city laugh, like Austin. You know, I, I was just in Austin about four months ago, but then I come back to Austin. You got to know a little bit about the city, who's out here. You know, I would never... Met you yesterday. I would never think I see Jamaican in, in Austin, you know. <laughs> and then blacks, blacks in Texas are different, you know. Yeah. Blacks in Texas are different than blacks in, in from the East Coast mm -hmm. or some of these big cities. So we, uh, you know, I guess transposing and growing is what makes a better comedian. Mm -hmm. So I think the main thing you got to understand is when I see, you know, when I come out to see. The, on shows like like yesterday, like I think it's a it's a difference because you can the, the 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 comics are seasoned, and you know that you're getting that level of professionalism with the guys that he's choosing, and I think that's what you know that that because I've been going to a lot of shows and you get these you get like five or six people that's going up in the lineup and they trying to figure out, you know, how to, how to, and it'd be, you like, he was good, but that one wasn't that good, you know. Well, yeah, uh, yeah oh, that, that one there hot, you know, it makes the crowd and, cold and, and hot. It's, and it's even hard for us, so like, it's hard for us to go on the road, because here's the thing, like, you know, right now, you know, it's me and Scruncho this weekend with Faison, right, and, you know, Scruncho is a legend, right, Scruncho is, is man, he's such a, a beast, he's a beast, and then, you know, this is the first time actually Scruncho and I, even though we knew each other, we work together. Yeah. So, you know, I got to be a beast. And then we rotate. I open for him. He opens for me. But we know what we got to do. And then, but we're only doing 15 minutes, 20 minutes each. 15, 20 where minutes. both of us can stay up there for an hour. Oh, yeah. You can do tell. our own show. Yeah. So we got to cut it down because that's not our job. Our job is to make sure we but you get can the tell. crowd ready. 
you could tell y'all not not just amateurs that y'all got it. You know, a lot of times, like I said, you go to these shows and it's one hit, then the other one don't hit, then the other one hit. Well, and that's a different type of show. Comedy's like everything else. That's like going to a concert, right? You know, like, you know, you have your, you know, it, it's, if you, don't, you go to a level, a lower level show, you're going to get that. You're going to get locals, people that get on stage. So it doesn't, you know, like, I, I told you, I did, I was on stage over 300 times last year. Wow, last year? Last year alone. So, you know, we're doing anywhere from five to 10 shows in a weekend. So you got to learn, you got to learn your set. You got to, then you got to change your set if you're going back to a city. Like I had to do a little bit different because I was in Austin four months ago. So I can't just do the same jokes. And then you just transform into the next year that you're going to return cities. Wow. Top, who, who top? Top three comedians of all time. Hmm. Dead or alive. Dead or alive, right? Top three. So I gotta go I gotta go red. Okay. Red Fox, Fox, right? Then who? Um and and, and no order, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Red Fox because I you know, uh after Red Fox I would I would definitely probably have to go hmm, that's gonna be I'm gonna say Bernie Mac. Okay. Man. And number three. And that's on style, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then my third one. I'm I'm, gonna, um, I'm definitely going to go, not because he's my guy, but I'm going to go phase on Love. Wow. Faison. Because that's that's a real today guy. And yeah. that doesn't take from Kevin and Dave. And no you Richard know, Pryor? You know, I, I, I like Rich. I like Richard Pryor, right? Um, I don't think he... I, I don't put him in that smoothness of the way I would do comedy. Okay. Or the way I enjoy it. You know, he... I mean, if I had to... If you told me four, Richard would be four. Yeah, because you yeah. did you did Red Fox, man. What, yeah. what, you like Sanford and Son? You watching him? Yes. See, I, <laughs> like, so I, I did. I, I wrote a uh, and 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 Faison, It was we we were gonna do it right before COVID, but I did. You know that whole I learned that from Faison watching some of these uh, older sitcoms. Like I'm I'm a fan. Rich, I, I grew up with Sanford and Son. I grew up with All in the Family. So, you know, I wrote a pilot for All in the Family, modern day with me as the Archie Bunker character. Because that's how I am. I'm Hispanic, but I'm also a Republican. I'm also, <laughs> I'm also an equal opportunity, prejudiced guy. I don't say racist because it's different, right? Prejudice, I don't like nobody. It'd be my own people. It'd be black, <laughs> white, Hispanic, Asians, Indians, it don't matter. That's Archie. That say, was Archie. I got to say every, about everybody because I think that's how you grow up. That's how you keep it real. So that's when I'm on stage, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about little retarded kids. You all heard me last night. I do a whole thing about that because yeah. they be sensitive about retarded. Retarded was not a big deal, you know? No, I, I didn't do it last night because of time, but I, I talk about the LGB and, and all that nonsense. Like all of a sudden, everybody wants to be in their own little respect. No, well, how about you respect everybody or... You just I think, say who is, you don't is that like? bullying though to a point? Bullying what? what what's bullying? Meaning, what's meaning talking meaning, about it? Yeah, me no, like like them basically. That it's it's the reverse way bullying. Pushing it, you know, it's, it's reverse and bullying. If you say something like they, well, that's, you, that's, you that's, could get it. Like, see now you telling my joke. That's oh, that's my it. joke. <laughs> my, see, I, I talk about that, so I'm like, why now I gotta figure out what letter you are? If you gay, you gay. Gay take everything, right? Gays, you do some strange for some change, that's good. Right? You go man, man, woman, woman, man, midget, it don't matter. But then you say midget, but you can't say midget. Why? They, midget is midget. We not we don't care about midgets. You know, people are like you gotta say small people. No, they they know they small. You retarded? Fuck you they don't wanna be small people. <laughs> Same thing with transgender. I, I personally feel there's no such thing as transgender. They're not. You either got a penis or you got a vagina. Now, yeah, you, some you, people are born with both. No, that's a hermaphrodite. Mm -hmm. that, that's another. That letter's not in there. <laughs> right? So, like I said, it's, it's, it's what anatomically what you are. Right? And then if you want to be something else, you be something else. Right? Because it's like this. If you a man and you, you want to call yourself a woman and you want to dress like a woman, knock yourself out. But if you a man and you want to dress like a woman and you want me to call you a woman, you fucking retarded. That's bullying. That's bullying. Why, why? Just because I don't want to call you what you want to be called? You know, you want to be a he, she, they, them. We don't care. Nobody Just cares. be who you want to be. I mean, we all grew up with, with uncles that we found out was really our aunt or the, the, the reverse of that, yep. you know? Right. Nobody warned us about that. So we, we, 
We, we ain't worried about that. That's that's not. But that reverse bullying now. Now you know you got to give them a whole month. The whole month of June, really? <laughs> he loved June. <laughs> Some of them. And then they t- they just took the rainbow. I love colors. Now, you don't want to wear colors now, cause you wear colors. It means some different shit. You, yeah, yeah. It means like you do, you wear three colors is a, a you a gang. You you take it in the ass on Tuesdays or some shit. We ain't got time to figure that shit out. And growing up, if you said gay, it was you're happy. Now gay means something else. But gay, you could be you could be gay and, and you know, but gay is encompasses everything. Why we gotta break the letters up, right? So that's 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 the stuff that becomes bullying, you know? No, you are exactly right. Like but, I, but that reverse bullying is exactly what it is, right? So as comedians, you know, people say it's hard for it ain't hard for me either. I, I've never sometimes we can't make everybody, but I don't. I never talk down about a race. I never talk down about sexuality. Like when you, you know, then that's just being mean, right? That's not comedy, you know, but there's just certain things. You can talk about the things that are attributed, you know, to us, especially at older age, you know, stuff like that. You know, that that's all we trying to talk about. Yeah. You know, and, and when we talk about the difference between comedy and, and new comedy and internet comedy, you know, it's, it's just how we see things, you know? Well, I'm gonna take you back though. For you to transition from New York to LA, how was that for you? What part of LA? I, no, was it no, LA? No, Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. I ain't, ain't nothing in Arizona for you to be getting in trouble with. No, no. New York is where I got in so you, 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 you slowed down in Arizona. You know, Arizona, I was good. That's when I went good. and raised. After he came we out, got he married, yeah, yeah. raised a new family, everything up in Arizona. Yeah, Arizona, that's a laid back area. Yeah. They, no. they got that new stadium there now, well, a couple well, years old. No, but they, I mean, everything in Arizona was new. Even the culture was new in Arizona. See, what happens in different states, kind of like Texas, and Texas don't give a fuck. Y'all got that no, gangster governor. No, no, we, we definitely, you know, I heard you say a little bit last night, yeah, yeah he'll yeah. roll up on you. Yeah, he'll roll for, for real. <laughs> right? But, you know, like Texas, I was, at first people get afraid of Texas, but what it is is they just keep it real. Arizona was one of those places too, and it was, it was a hub. I actually, and I just bought a house in Hawaii, so I live in Hawaii. Ooh. So I go back and forth between. Oh, you talking and, that different talk now? You got oh, you got WPS. some dirt over in Hawaii. That's WPS. Can you speak the language? In Hawaiian? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pineapples. <laughs> Pineapples and pork. That's what they eat over there. How is the weather in Hawaii? Oh, beautiful, gorgeous. You said everything in Hawaii is expensive though. What's a, everyone uses the example. You know how much a gallon of milk is? Well, yes. yes, you're going to say, right? That's what everybody say. Yeah. yeah, $7, but how much milk do you drink? I don't even eat drink milk now. I don't even drink milk. It's great living. Unless it's almond milk. Oh, yeah, see, there you go. That's that bullshit. Yeah. That's that. Man, I, Jim, Jim, just, they don't even know what almond milk is in Jamaica. Knock it off. Shoot. Goat milk. You should be no, drinking some goat milk if you're from Jamaica. I had almond, <laughs> almond trees in my yard in Jamaica. But you, but you wasn't squeezing milk no, out of the almond. <laughs> yeah. I did coconut milk. We see coconut milk, goat that's milk. Real. Yeah, that's real. So when it, when it comes down, do you, have you been in the movies or you never did you get into the movie scene? My my, the only movies I had scenes in were actually Phase Out movies. Oh, Phase Out oh, put yeah. you on. Yeah, Phase Out put me on. Which <laughs> one? Um, Santa Games. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah, and, I remember and that. that kind of strip, but I don't even know if I made the cut because I didn't see the movie. <laughs> it's a hidden clip. It's a hit, hidden because I didn't see the movie. It was in the. It, it should, it's coming out streaming soon. Oh, but that, that movie's gonna be. That movie's gonna be on fire. It, it didn't. It didn't get the love in the theater because it got delayed for two years. Mm-hmm. But that one had. Uh, it had Phase On in it. And when I tell you, you want to see take a comic class, so you have Phase On. Bill, oh, Bill Bellamy I've been on the road with too. So Faze on Bill Bellamy, Gary Owen, Wesley Snipes, Ooh. Tiffany Haddish. What? That's JB the one Smooth. I remember he was saying that he had done something I the last time month, we spoke to I him. I spent a month that. in Vegas with them on that. Yeah. Woo! How was that? That was that was that was the, the that was probably the highest part of my career. I other bet, than man. me being All of them being like together like that. Can I love me some Wesley too? Yeah. Man, I'll tell you the funny shit behind the scenes, the stuff that you didn't see. Like, I was there with comedic geniuses. Like, it was, it, it would probably have been the, the same as if I was, uh, you know, if I was at behind the scenes of the movie Life. When, yeah, when yeah, 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 you yeah. Know? But this one to me was even better because you got these, this comic, this, and Faison's an improv guy. Um, all of them, Gary. Yeah. You know, Gary was going through his divorce at the time. So every time Faze on walked by, you ever seen that that scene in Prince when when Morris Day walks by the dressing room and yeah, he yeah. back and goes, How's the family? Yeah. 
<laughs> so, so Gary was in the middle of his divorce, and Faison would walk by and he was in the room, and he stopped back and said, Mad how's the family? Mad Which Mad normally he'd be like, damn, that's fucked up. You know what I mean? That was Gary's response. Gary was fucked up. He would just look at him, but Gary loved Faison. Like, that's what I'm saying. That camaraderie to see Bill Bellamy together with the J.B. Smooth had stories. I mean, you That's name a it. cold I mean, it was, line man, up, man. That was, so when we learn as comedians, you know, so that's, to me, that's the growing up in comedy. You know, that's why these internet comedians would never see that. I got a chance to be there behind. Chris Spencer was the how did you play your How did you play your part in it? Like, you knew. I was a bouncer in the, uh, in the strip, the, the. You was a bouncer? I was a bouncer in the strip club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to do a couple of scenes in that. But it was, um, you know, it, it was. That's what we. That's what you you supposed to be for. mean. You supposed to be mean. Yeah, that's but these women. And they, yeah, if you saw these guys dancing on stage and everything, you would have been cracking. I mean, it was too funny, man. It, Face it was, under any um. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got. I'll show you when we get off. I got <laughs> I I I behind the scenes of him yeah, dancing. Yeah, oh, he's dancing. Little, little, yeah, he dancing. But he, uh, Faze on hell, he man. didn't want, they wanted him to wear a Speedo. He didn't want to yeah. wear a Speedo. Yeah, he said, no, I ain't wearing Oh, he was shit. a stripper. Yeah, he was a stripper. He's a male stripper. Ooh. They, they come and yeah, they tell him to save the club. So what outfit was he in? Well, they, they, they had tear-offs. Oh, oh okay. damn. Yeah. But yeah. he, yeah. boy, there hey. different scenes. But you, and you was a bouncer that thing. I was a bouncer at the strip club. But so that's yeah. hard, man. When, but, and you say it's come, it's still coming. It, it, it came out in August, but the actor strike was yeah, out. So it was it only in theaters for a couple of weeks. Oh, man. So How, the, uh, you it's coming for, out to streaming. It's coming out for streaming soon. I, I think uh, uh, it got to be a couple of weeks because it's, it's just for distribution purposes. They were just holding it for streaming. Wow, but, man. But, so, but like I said, that's... I mean, being on the road with a Faison, being on the road with these guys. Like, I did a show with me, Faison, Bill Bellamy, and Gary Owen. I got a theater show in El Paso. We did that earlier this year. That was that was crazy. I mean, just Man. getting on stage with those type of guys are like... For you to even, like I said, for you to to, to appeal to those crowds night after night, city after city. Man, that says, that, that, that speaks... Uh, a whole volume to who you are. And as I'm just growing. I'm growing as a comic. That's why people say, "Oh, people, I don't know you." I'm like, "Well, that's the way I actually like it." Mm -hmm. Because when it's ready to know me, then you'll know. You know, like yeah. you guys didn't see me until you. I didn't see you. I didn't, that's day. right. Then, that was only a little piece, right. and that's the late night crowd that wasn't even that. You know, right? That was okay. Into yeah, yeah, it, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But you know, when we go out there, we, you know, we got. I got a job to do. You got to bring it. I got to get them ready. And and we got to get ready to go. You Man, know, so, so if you our look, viewers, so if our viewers want to look at you up, um, t tell me. IG something. is probably the best, but I don't What's do my I don't my do MySpace no more. So you don't do MySpace. My AOL, I took away of that. <laughs> you know, it's old time. My, my so IG is uh, Rob Laughs. R O B L A F F S. Okay. And, and, and you like you like uh oh Bobo, so I'm gonna give him another shout out. Yeah, no, Rob, Rob, because he's a young, up and coming, very frugal. You know, low key guy. You know, he has his market, which is good. Like I said, I don't do the Hispanic market because it, it was not what I grew up with. Yeah, you know, I didn't yeah. grow up in a Hispanic household. Yeah. I grew up in a regular household, and then I grew up urban. You know, I grew up in the, in the Bronx. I grew up in Long Island. You know, I grew up around minorities. You know, my that's urban comedy to me is the best comedy. So that's that's where we go hard at. You know. At Man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Like, man, like I said, man, I'm gonna be watching y'all tonight too, man. I, uh, shout out to Faison, man. Scruncho, you, man. What y'all doing out here in Austin, Texas, man? We had to come down here, man. Boss Talk 101 could let y'all y'all couldn't step foot in Texas. See, I'm I'm for the start. Really, uh, y'all gonna have to check in, okay? <laughs> y'all niggas ain't gonna just keep coming down here to Texas. And and when y'all come, I'm gonna I'm gonna come cook and she, she gonna cook. I'm gonna show love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ready for a nap. We doing, we doing the interviews after. We ate oxtails and cornbread. Oh, yeah. yeah, we knew we couldn't let Faison come up here and do it like that. We like, we got to get that boy in there first, man. And I almost didn't come because I was going to go what? shopping. Yeah, because it, it was coming out. And he didn't tell me to the last minute. I'm like, no, we, I got to go. He goes, yeah. And then I remember yesterday you said you was cooking. I said, oh, yeah, man, you know, had to come, had man. To come, but no, definitely to give the love. And, man, thank and, you so much, man. Definitely on Boss Talk. And it's, it's definitely our pleasure, my pleasure to be here. And, and I appreciate y'all. No, we appreciate you, man. Man, hey, wherever you at, we looking for you now, man. You've been on Boss Talk 101, man. What a boss's talk. And we out. Man. Well,